As the population of the world expands at a breathtaking rate, we inevitably squeeze wildlife into an ever smaller space, as their natural habitat becomes ours. As human populations expand, as the demand for agricultural space expands to meet the needs of growing human populations, I think the conflicts between elephants and people are, are going to become significant in these areas. I think the biggest challenge in 20 years' time is the fact that the habitat is, is disappearing. Capitalists are, on the whole, uh, more interested in making money than they are saving the planet. One of the more radical long-term ideas proposed by respected conservationist Dave Varty is to restore elephants' natural migratory routes. Well, we got the big five and all the rest down there. We are unique in the world. We have the biggest park in the world under wildlife. That is our stock in trade. The Swiss make watches and chocolate. Okay, We are wildlife. We are the leaders in the world in the so-called restoration model, right? Why would we not simply extend that park and link it with the mountains? It's called corridors. So I create the elephants can walk up this corridor into the 1500 millimeters of rain and back down that corridor into the lowlands and I would have reinstated the model that was here before any of us arrived. 10,000 years ago, that's what the elephants would do. So I'll then bring in hundreds and hundreds of people like you to come and look at these animals and these folk over here will benefit from your being here. So what does the future hold? The crisis facing the South African elephant population is symptomatic of a much larger problem, as the challenges of conservation are dwarfed by the monstrous issue of ecosystem management. Unless people start thinking in a very, very different way, there's really no reason to think there's any hope. Now, I think people may be starting to think in different ways, and I think the great thing is that I think young people are beginning to see how important it is to save the planet rather than to put the standard of living as measured by dollars up another 5%. So I think the, the only hope really is that young people are going to have a completely different way of looking at what the most important values in life are. But one thing's for certain is that we can all live with a lot less we can get by with a lot less if we change what is important. And all the things we do, we acquire money, build bigger houses, bigger air conditioners, bigger rooms, and you're gonna be saying, wait a minute, I don't need all this shit. How many cars do I need? How many holiday homes do I need? Do I need all of this stuff? And I'm just going to start simplifying. I'd rather not have a holiday home. I'd rather knock the damn thing over and let the birds go and live in that part of the world. Or the bears. And that you guys have enormous influence, you young people. One person can change the world. I think the biggest challenge we're going to need to face is that we're going to need to make decisions on how we're going to manage species. Um, and we're talking specifically now with elephants. I mean, we need to make decisions on how to manage elephants. And we need to make, make them. Now, not in 10 years' time and not in 20 years' time. Um, we can't afford to wait. You put a cage around animals, you've got to start taking decisions. You need to create corridors for the elephants back to the mountains. But it's not so that you can save the elephants. It's so that you can reinstate a sustainable life for us humans in the long haul. So this is not about elephants. And if you want to go on containing the elephants and culling them in Kruger because there's no space or because they're damaging the biodiversity, you have fundamentally missed the point. It's not just an elephant issue. It's a, it's a combination of man, elephant, man's impact, the way we manage things, how we utilize fire, uh, you know, how we treat the system as a whole. And, uh, and this is where everyone's got a responsibility. So the question about the elephant is not about the elephant, it's about what are we as humans, what have we done to create this situation and how do we reinstate nature's grain plan, whether it's for the bears in California or the elephants in Africa. And the only hope 
that we're faced with, in my view, is a growing global consciousness. You will come with a different approach to our existence on this planet. It may not be you, it may be your children. But it is you, the individual, not you saving the world, not the WWF or Save the World Societies or organizations or the World Bank or the IMF or government or George Bush or Joe Shit the Ragman. It is you, just you, in the way in which you conduct your relationship with the Earth. Despite innovative and valuable new ways to manage populations, there are no easy solutions, only difficult decisions. Decisions that ultimately lie with every one of us. The survival of animals worldwide depends on the education of new generations to understand we must change the way we live, not the way they live. If we are to ever slow down the inevitable, we have to realize that conservation is about much more than putting up a fence.